Welcome back. Road Rants on Star Wars. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Join the Road Squadron. Today, let's talk about Taka Watiti talking about the Mandalorian. This is via Slash Film. As we know, he is one of the directors working on Disney's upcoming streaming series, The Mandalorian. It is set in the world of Star Wars Bounty Hunters. He confirmed that the first live-action Star Wars series would match the tone of the original trilogy that required some adaptation from the comedic director of Thor Ragnarok. However, he was happy to fall in line. Hear that, Ryan Johnson? The original trilogy lives, quote, Star Wars is very different to Marvel style. What TD told press after TCA panel for What We Do in the Shadows TV series. Quote, they know that tone of the first films really and should be kind of adhered to. That's what the fans like and you really can't disrespect it. I guess is a nicer way of saying can't put too many jokes in it. Ryan Johnson. There's a bit, definitely, my tone is in there, the dialogue and stuff like that. That's good news for fans who might have worried a TV series could water down the movies. Although n nothing could be further from the original tone than the three prequels. Plus, Dave Filoni is involved and he managed consistency with his animated Star Wars shows. Boba Fett's Legacy Star Wars fans have been clamoring for more Boba Fett ever since The Empire Strikes Back, or perhaps even since the Star Wars Holiday Special animated short. He was unceremoniously dismissed in the beginning of The Return of the Jedi, so perhaps the Mandalorian can carry on his legacy. Pedro Pascal has been cast as the Mandalorian gunfighter, and a droid bounty hunter has been revealed. We believe that to be IG-88. Quote, for most kids growing up with these films, Boba Fett was one of the most favorite characters, even though he's barely in the films. Just the idea of bounty hunters, the helmets are so cool. Just getting to see the characters like that and getting to shoot with them is pretty cool. John Favreau created The Mandalorian for Disney's Plus. Jumping into a later episode, Watiti confirmed that Favreau's world building was sound. He also revealed a massive stormtrooper army scene. Quote, Favreau's a genius and so smart and so good at what he does in creating these worlds. The scripts are really great. It was really fun doing something in the Star Wars universe. It was every kid's dream just to see a stormtrooper. But when you're doing these scenes with like 50 or 60 of them, it's pretty amazing. I loved it. As we know, The Mandalorian comes to the streaming service later this year. So what do we think about this, Road Squadron? As you know, my Star Wars fandom at this point is hinging on the Mandalorian, and to a lesser extent, the Cassian Andor series, uh, because I, I do think there's some potentially great stories coming there. Um, I know a lot of fans would like to see Sith and Jedi stuff right now. Uh, I do believe that is coming with the Benihoff and Weiss trilogy. Uh, so there will be some of that in the future. Uh, at least we think there will be. Um, this show has an unbelievable amount of directing talent coming its way. Favreau is the showrunner. Filoni is directing. Bryce Dallas Howard is directing episodes. Um, it looks like, as much as I hate to say it, I believe this is probably where your next great Star Wars product is coming from, is this television show. And that's mainly built on the back 
of being able to have 8 to 12 hours worth of storytelling and character building. The film is actually considering doing a title reveal with the trailer at Star Wars Celebration, much like Marvel did with Avengers Endgame. For some reason, Lucasfilm, I guess, has determined that they feel this product is still as strong as something like Marvel right now. I think this is a poor move on Lucasfilm's part. Um, they need to understand we were coming off a fantastic film in Avengers Infinity War. Um, so they had a lot of cred built up with Marvel fans and with you know, us geeks in general. We got a really, really strong product. Unfortunately, we got a really poor product in The Last Jedi. So, I'm not sure I understand why Lucasfilm believes they can employ that strategy for Star Wars Episode Nine. Um, it seems to me like we need a teaser. It seems to me like we need a title. It seems to me like um, Lucasfilm might want to understand that Star Wars is severely wounded right now. And if they have confidence in their product, they better do something to show it. Because right now, we are losing confidence in the product as fans. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Join the Road Squadron. Peace, I'm out. Till next time.